My name is Bill Watson with Presidential Pools. I'm the service manager here. And uh, we like to do this pool school for everyone just to kind of uh, teach you a little bit about uh, your pool equipment and water chemistry. Um, each month we do host a pool school and we do try to do a different category, different topic, just so we can kind of teach you uh, the fundamentals of everything we possibly can about the pool equipment and pool. Today is the IntelliChem. Um, now the IntelliChem can be quite uh, difficult as far as understanding it, so I'm just gonna kind of scan over the basics of it, and then if you have some in-depth questions, I can definitely go over after the class with you, but just to kind of keep everybody on the same, same page, I'm just gonna breeze over the fundamentals and uh, how to maintenance it, how it operates and works, and then from there, if you have any further questions, just get with me and I'll definitely go in depth for you. So um, those of you, if, uh, if you've never been in this class before, welcome. Thank you for being here, I really appreciate that. Um, we do have a stream online, this class is online. So if you ever wanna be at the comfort of your own home and listen and hear and see things, um, you don't get to hang out with me though and you don't get the, the fresh donuts and coffee in the morning, but um, you do get to stay home and uh, you definitely can type in a question. So if you have any questions that comes to us and I can still try to answer those for you over the internet. So um, you said we do it, let's, can we get with the questions afterwards on the, online? So how many online people do we have? We don't have that. 15 online, welcome. Thank you for being online with us, appreciate it. Um, so this is the IntelliChem class. So what I wanna do first is I'm just gonna go over the basics and how this operates and how it monitors. And then uh, again, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to go over with them. <clears throat> so how many have this unit at all? Anybody in here have this in telechem? Well, it's perfect. It's perfect timing to show you what this is all about. So basically what this in telechem system does is it monitors and adjusts your pH for you. So it balances your water. It monitors and adjusts the chlorine for you through your salt cell if you have a salt system, but you can use this strictly for adjusting your pH, okay? So the benefit of this is this is a unit that stands by, monitors and tests your water every day, um, periodically throughout the day, and it adjusts the pH for you. The biggest concern in Arizona is high pH and high calcium hardness, and that's kind of why we all have that calcium ring around our fresh new tile because it's very hard water in Arizona. And because of the high heat and sodium in the water helps raise the pH up. And when you have a high pH in your pool, uh, it doesn't allow your free chlorine to act as, as efficient as it should. Um, it also doesn't allow or doesn't fight against the calcium buildup that you get on the actual water line tile. So um, if you notice every time you test your pH, um, it's high. And then basically what you're doing is you're putting in the acid and lowering the pH. And next week you test the water and it's high again. You know what I'm saying? So every time that pH is high, it's not, it's not being effective the way it should be. One, it's water, your water is out of balance. Okay, so you can, um, you can get basically itchy or eyes, you know, your eyes water, they get red, itchy skin type scenario when you have a high pH level. So not only does it not allow your free chlorine to do its job and kill uh, pathogens and uh, bacteria and algae properly and efficiently, but it, it allows your calcium hardness to build up heavier and more on the tile. And it just doesn't allow that water to be balanced properly the way it should be. So um, the key to this is you always want to have, the benefit of having this is it's monitoring kind of like a pool guy on your pool at all times. It's testing your pH periodically and it's adjusting your pH for you. So that's the benefit of this system. It is, uh, this system is a little bit of a cost. Uh, you know, there's $1,500 to put this system in, but I will tell you it's definitely worth it because it's doing the, the, the service for you. Now it's totally up to you if you're good at servicing your water and testing your water. I mean, most of us don't have the time to test two and three times a week. The benefit of this system, it tests every day for you and it adjusts for you. So that's the benefit of having this. Um, again, if you have good pH water, you have good chlorine in your pool because it's a, being more effective. Um, the, the, the tile line will look a lot better because 
calcium gets broken down by acid. Acid breaks the calcium down. You don't have that line like everybody else does. So I'm not saying it's gonna completely disappear, but it will help uh, resolve some of it. So there's definitely some benefits. So basically, um, let's start with this acid container. This is just an acid container. So right now, when you're testing the water, you're seeing that the pH is high, you're going to the store or you're going to the garage and you're getting some acid, you're going over there and you're pouring the acid in the water and then basically away it goes. And then a week later you test, the pH is high. And so it's just continual repetition of problematic water for you. So having this unit, basically you just put the acid in this container and then when the actual sensor senses that it needs pH or adjustment, it turns this little pump on in the front, takes the acid out of the container and pumps it into your pool equipment. So it's continually monitoring and adjusting the pH for you. So that's a benefit of having this unit. Um, there are two probes, basically an ORP and a pH probe. So one is monitoring the pH of the water and one is monitoring what's called the ORP, which is oxidation reduction potential. And all that is in, in a layman's term is the adjustment for free chlorine, okay? So these probes basically sit in this container, okay? This is basically a flow container. And what happens is the pool water comes into here and goes across these probes, which sit in here like so. The only reason I don't have them in here is because they're water sensitive. You have to have a cap on them and keep the actual probe wet at all times. So basically these two probes sit in here and as the water comes across the probe tip, it basically registers the information to the control box. The control box then says, hey, do I need to adjust the pH or do I need to adjust the ORP, which is the free chlorine, okay? So the only difference between what you have and this system does is your o ORP or your uh, adjustment to free chlorine is through the percentage setting on your easy touch. So for example, you would set it at 50 or 60%, 70% and so forth, and that would produce more chlorine. The adjustment on this particular unit is just ORP. So basically all this does is senses the free chlorine in the water and then tells the salt chlorine cell to turn on or turn off, okay? The only difference between this and what you have already is that when the cell gets turned on, it gets turned on at 100% for a brief period of time and then it turns off and then it readjusts, test again, turns the cell on and off. So throughout the day, your pH is getting tested, it's getting adjusted through the container and it's also testing for free chlorine and it's adjusting your salt cell by turning it on at 100% for a brief period of time, giving a blast of chlorine, then it's testing again, giving another blast of chlorine and testing again, okay? So it's a very good unit. Um, there is, you know, a lot of speculation behind the unit that people say, hey, it's a tough unit, it's tough to deal with. It's, it's a great unit if you stay attentive to it. Um, a lot of people think if I have this, it's kind of a set and forget. It's not, it's something that you wanna monitor you want to do some basic maintenance, um, but I can assure you having this on your pool is doing a lot better than you are testing. Unless you're a real avid tester and you're testing your water about every day to every two days, you'll really be able to dial in your water. Without doing that, you definitely want a system like this doing it for you. So there's definitely some benefits to having the system. Um, it's, it's testing regular for you. It's adjusting regularly for you. And uh, overall, you're gonna have a crystal clear, well-maintenance water um, for your pool and for your family. So it's definitely beneficial. So um, again, super easy on this container. I know you guys don't have it, but we do have some people online that may have it. So I just wanna go through some basic maintenance. Um, so for example, on this uh, particular lid, you just pop the lid off. Um, what's really cool about this in the very center, I don't know if everybody can see, in the very center, there's a spike in the very center. So when you have your muriatic acid, you don't have to take the lid off and pour it. You can just flip it upside down, straight in. It punctures the actual, or the actual gallon of acid. Acid then goes into the container. Um, this is a four gallon, so you wanna do a 50-50 mix. So 50% water, 50% muriatic acid, okay? So now there's a few adjustments. So you can adjust through the actual control panel, or you can adjust using just a more strength of acid, there's totally a few adjustments that you can use. So I would start with like a 50-50 mix. 
um, and then basically go from there and see how it's adjusting your water, okay? Um, if you do a more diluted, you'll probably use more, okay? Um, and you'll have to refill it more. So for me to you, I would just use the 50-50 mix. It'll be somewhat diluted and it'll work a lot better for you, okay? So um, the probes, as far as the maintenance on these probes, basically all you've got to do is they come with caps with a little sponge at the tip. You just want to unthread these out of the flow unit, okay? Um, basically all you do is get yourself a little bowl or a little uh, plate or something that will hold some water. Take a, a toothbrush, a little Tide soap, a little CLR type thing, because basically what happens on these probes is what happens on your waterline tile. You get calcium that builds up on the probe, and then the probe doesn't read properly for you. So this is kind of the maintenance. Um, so this is the tough part that most people have trouble with is they just think that the unit's going to do its thing. But you've got to make sure that these are, these are what makes the system operate, right? So if you keep these probes clean, and it's just as simple as unthreading a cap and giving a little scrub, rinsing it off, and putting it back in the actual flow tube, um, so you know, you know, that it's nice and clean for you. So there's only two maintenances. So cleaning these probes, I would highly recommend probably looking at them at least every couple of weeks to a month. And it's just simple. Unthread it, you know, have a look at the probe itself. If it looks clean and clear, right back in. If not, you just take a, a scrub brush, a little, like I said, Tide, a Dove detergent, something with a little acidity to it. CLR works really well. And you're just taking that white calcium that builds up on the pool. And, you know, uh, everybody understands what hard water is in Arizona, I'm sure. Um, the calcium buildup that we all see on our dishes, our shower doors, um, the, the white line around the pool tile, that's hard water. And that's basically what builds up on these probes. So by cleaning the probes, it gives the most adjustment for you and it's gonna sense uh, correctly for you and then therefore it's gonna make the water balance that much better for you, okay? So that's basically it on, on cleaning the probes. Um, there is one little inline screen um, that I don't know, uh, most people probably don't know about. Basically, this is just a little catch screen to make sure you don't get any debris into this chamber and all you wanna do is make sure periodically, probably every couple of weeks to a month, Unthread this, pull the screen out, clean it, screen back in, and back to normal. So there's not very much maintenance to it. It's just basically cleaning the probes and making sure you have muriatic acid in the actual container, okay? Now, again, on the salt cell, uh, the salt cell is exactly, everybody have a salt system? Okay, good. So the only difference right now when you need chlorine, you're testing the water. Okay, and you're saying, hey, I need less chlorine or more chlorine. Right now, more chlorine for sure, right? Because we're all swimming more, it's a lot hotter more, so there's more demand on our pool water. So basically, you're testing your water manually. You're walking out there and testing it, and then you're adjusting the salt cell. The benefit to this system, it tests for you and adjusts for you. So that's the benefit of having it, you know what I mean? Again, um, it's, it's a unit that's ideal for the ideal pool. If you're looking for that maintenance-free pool, this is the system for you. Now, um, like you were saying, you know, some people tell you it's a maintenance scenario. Well, there's nothing in the world that doesn't have some kind of maintenance to it, I'll tell you. Um, and uh, it's very small amount of maintenance. I think the biggest misconception is it's kind of this, hey, this is gonna do it all for you. You don't have to worry about anything. And that's not the truth. Um, the truth is, is it's a damn good system. If you can maintain the probes and clean them, uh, make sure you've got the right amount of acid in the container. And of course, clean your salt cell and maintain it the same way that you're doing now, because when the cell gets turned on, it needs to produce chlorine the exact same way. The only difference is, is you're adjusting your chlorine through percentage, this adjusts through ORP. That's the only difference. Same scenario, same exact result, but this is an ORP, which is oxidation reduction, and this is a percentage adjustment through the cell. So that's the only difference between the two. So um, I did want to bring out, well, let me, I'll, I'll hit this at the very end. So let me go over um, this programming. Do we have, it's gonna be tough because I'm gonna be showing these people how to adjust something that you don't even have. So that's gonna be kind of <laughs> tough. So if you guys could just bear with me, I'm just gonna go through a few things. So what's cool about this again is 
it also has what's called a saturation index. So what saturation index is, is a, is a, um, a grand number of all the temperature, your pH, your alkalinity, your salt level. So it's going to tell you exactly how ideal your water is. So in a quick uh, example, you have three bodies of water, let's say three types of water. You have an aggressive slash corrosive water, which is very low pH, low alkalinity scenario. And basically what that can do is that can uh, destroy pool equipment, seals, metal uh, parts. It can wear holes through heat exchangers in your heater. Um, you know, we've, we've had some real aggressive water out there. Uh, primarily, you'll have what's called a scaling scenario. So remember, we have a corrosive water. We've got this normal, perfect, balanced water, which we all want. And then we have uh, what's called scaling or uh, high calcified water, okay, which 99% of us have. We, we're in the hard scaling buildup because we have high pH, high calcium hardness. So that puts us in this um, kind of uh, scaling scenario. So what I mean by scaling is you get the buildup on the tile, the, the white buildup on the tile. You'll see uh, the buildup that gets on the salt cell. Anybody cleaned a salt cell yet? Everybody, you see all the calcium, the white buildup that happens on the plates, that's called scaling. And actually, if you start to see that on the cell, it's on the interior of the pool, it's on the filters in the pool, you just don't see it because it's moist, okay? If you let everything dry out, you would get a, a chalky look on the interior. Or let's say, you know, when you first did the plaster, it feels really smooth. And about a year later, it feels a little more rough than it did before. That's scale. That's buildup that's happening on top of the actual surface of the pool. Okay. So in, in turn, we need to have this perfectly balanced water. In this state, very tough to, to accommodate that. That's why they came out with systems like this, because it needs to be adjusted more, more frequently. Okay. So for example, um, by having this unit, the saturation index will tell you if your water is corrosive, if your water is scaling, if your water is ideal or normal. So again, there's some, some benefit to having this because right now you would have no clue without, unless you took all the samples of the water that you need and went down to a, a company and asked what the saturation index is. With this unit, you can go to it it's gonna, you'll put in all the information and it'll tell you exactly if your water is perfect, balanced, uh, high or scaling scenario or uh, low and corrosive. So this is another cool unit. So basically what you would do is you would just press the menu button first. And then basically all you're gonna do is select the pH menu. So what's cool about this is right away you can set the set point of pH. It normally comes right at 7.5 default. But as you can see, you can adjust the pH lower or higher just by setting the number here. Okay, so if you want a little higher pH or a little lower pH, you simply go into the set point, adjust the set point, and then as this unit turns on, it'll adjust to that particular level. 7.5 is generally the ideal range, so that's why it's set at the default at 7.5. There's not much adjustment for you to be made, okay? Um, so we'll go ahead and press select on this dosage, and um, this is a mixing time. So basically what this mixing time does is I like to set this for 30 minutes. It comes set up at an hour. So every 30 minutes, it's going to be adjusting the pH and mixing the water for 30 minutes before it readjusts and retests. So basically I have this set up for every 30 minutes. It's gonna test the pH and it's gonna adjust the pH. So you can do it more frequently or less frequently. Um, I recommend once we kind of set this for you, I'd probably leave it right at that level, but there is adjustments to be made if you need to make that, okay? So again, you can set this totally. There's so many features in this unit that you can adjust and test the water just to make sure it's more efficient for your pool. Remember, each pool is different. Um, each body of use is different. My pool, very, not very many people swim in it. It's me or my son, and it's probably once a month. It's unfortunate, right? Some people, we have, they have five or six kids in every day. You know what I mean? Because they have swim schools and stuff like that. So totally different scenarios there. You have one pool that's getting a lot of chemical absorbed, and you have another pool like mine that the chemicals don't get absorbed very much because there's nobody swimming in it. So it's kind of just one of those adjustments. So that's what makes this unit so cool is you can adjust for every scenario that's out there. Okay. 
again, I'm not going to bore you guys too much with the details um, because uh, you guys don't have a system, so I don't want to try and teach you something that you don't have. I just want to kind of brisk go over the surface of it. Um, so you can, uh, again, adjust how much acid it puts in. So here's another great function here, and this is under the pH dosage tab, and this is screen two of two. You'll see the very first one is one of one, which is the actual uh, amount, and then this is the actual dosage per limit. So basically, I have this set up, so every time this pump turns on, it pumps nine ounces of acid into the pool. Now, it's totally adjustable up to you. Now, you think nine ounces is quite a bit of acid because you're used to putting a cup in here and there. The best thing about this is you can adjust that. It'll put this acid in faster, so it'll adjust your pH faster for you and more frequently for you or less frequently for you. But there's so many different adjustments you can make. Um, again, totally adjustable how much acid you want to put in. Um, obviously, if you have a bigger pool, you're going to want to adjust more frequently and you're going to want to put more acid into it. If you have a smaller pool, uh, you know, basically you can lower the amount that it's putting in and, and raise the amount that it's testing. So this it's adjustable from a 5,000 gallon pool to a 30,000 gallon pool, if not more. So it's completely adjustable, however you want to do that. Um, so we're going to back out of this. And we're going to uh, back completely out, and we're just going to go to the ORP menu and press select on the ORP. And again, so the set point is 700. So you're used to setting a 0 to 100%. So, for example, if you test your free chlorine today and your salt cell set up 50% and you have very low chlorine, you're going to go up percentage, right? Because the higher the percentage, the more free chlorine it produces. So your adjustment will be through percentage on this particular unit, you would go to the set point and it goes from anywhere from 400 to 800, okay? So you would increase the set point to uh, produce more free chlorine or decrease the set point to produce less free chlorine. So same scenario, same adjustability, just a different way of adjusting, okay? Uh, and then let's go ahead and back out of this. This, again, this is probably the best thing about this unit. And the next one is called a saturation index and we're just gonna press select on that. So now, see what this does is it gives you the pH. Now this unit will automatically give you the pH. Now the trouble I'm having is we're not connected to a actual pool equipment. I've kind of faked my little flow switch here to think that it has water flow, but it doesn't. Um, so that's why we're able to get some of these readings. So basically the pH is gonna have an automatic, it's automatically gonna know what that pH level is, so it's gonna put that in there for you, okay? And then the next one is temperature, 77 degrees. That's another automatic uh, number that you're going to get because we have an, uh, a water sensor that's in the pool equipment. So that's going to give that information to you. So here is the CH. So basically what you would do is um, you would test your water manually, okay? Find out what the calcium hardness level is, and you would come into this menu and enter that number, okay? And then you would put your salt. Now salt level is also an automatic number that's gonna be there because you have a salt system and that salt system is gonna give this system the reading. So there's gonna be a handful of stuff that's already put in there for you and a handful of stuff that you can actually adjust yourself. So for example, the total alkalinity, this doesn't adjust, or I'm sorry, this doesn't test for alkalinity. So you're basically gonna manually put this in just by continually going through each one and you're basically, all you're doing is telling this unit exactly what the water level is or what the water chemistry level is. And then at the end of that, it's going to tell you exactly where your water in the pool is. So for example, the pH is 7.3, the temperature is 77 degrees, the calcium hardness is 250, the salt level is 3000, the total alkalinity okay, is 90, the CYA, which is called cyanuric acid, is 30. So right now we've basically put all the information into this box and this box is telling us that our water is normal, okay? Which is good, thumbs up, we're all good. No need to have any worries from here. We know our water is normal and we can swim and enjoy it just like anything else, okay? The cool thing about this is if, for example, this box will tell you, hey, it's water is corrosive or water is scaling you go to this particular menu and find out what I need to adjust to make my water normal. Again, this is something that is 
uh, a little bit more uh, information than most people need, but most people don't have this, so they have no clue when they're getting into their pool if the water's corrosive. What happens here, and I'll tell you the exact scenario. We get calls um, and it says, hey, my heater's leaking. We go out there and we say, oh, the exchanger's been breached. That means that the copper tubing has had a hole in it. Um, that's how aggressive water is, you know, just like the Grand Canyon, just like anything else. Water is very, very aggressive and it will break down things. So without you knowing, without you having this system, those people don't know. They don't have a clue that their water's corrosive until they have a problem with their equipment. And then we say, hey, you know, your water's a little corrosive. It's starting to break down copper. It's starting to wear the seals and the pumps. It's starting to take the uh, interior and making it a lot rougher. And then you start to see pebble loss. You know what I mean? See, I'm giving you all the worst case scenarios and I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to tell you that if your water is not normal and not balanced, these things can happen. Um, again, we're actually all fortunate because in this state, very rarely do we have corrosive water. We have more of a scaling scenario. So we have more of the buildup on the tile, the buildup on the cell, the rough surfaces. To me, I'd rather have a scaling pool than a corrosive pool, if that makes sense to everybody. Um, so don't try to scare you with this whole corrosive water, but if I didn't teach you that or tell you about it, you know, I'd, I'd be giving you a disservice. You know what I mean? You've got to know about that. So again, let's go back to that saturation index and we'll just select it. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and show you what happens here. So right now, I just put us in a normal pool, Arizona pool, right? We've got a high pH, 8.4. Our temperature's the same. The calcium hardness is the same. The salt's the same. The total alkalinity, everything's the same. But as you notice at the very bottom, just because my pH is high, my saturation index is now scaling. So now my pool is scaling. Okay, it's no longer normal, it's no longer good, it's in the scaling form. So now you know, most people without this don't know. You have this system, now you know that your water is not good, it's not normal, and how to adjust that, okay? So simply by coming over here and, and showing that just by adjusting the pH down a little bit, as soon as I get it into the proper range, I mean, just by taking it from 8.4 to 8.1, I have put my water back into a normal atmosphere, okay? Again, the benefit to this is you don't have to go to your pool and do all the math, you know what I mean? And go, oh, I need to put this in and this in. This is doing it for you. So that's the beauty of this system, okay? Any questions so far? I know it's a lot of information and I don't wanna go too in depth um, because if you don't have it, you, you have no clue about it, you know what I mean? So this is something that you're gonna want first and then make the adjustments and then let me teach you on it. So, um, but the cool thing about this is again, it's giving you information that most of us do not know. That's the benefit of this system, all right? Um, so yeah, again, you can totally make the adjustments as you want. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna just show you something that, um, I just want to go through this and I'm going to put you in a real scenario of Arizona pool here. So what I'm doing is I'm just adjusting this to kind of show you um, what really happens So as you can see, so basically we have a high pH, which is a norm, right? We have high temperature. So just, just by adjusting a few things here. So as you can see um, before, so you see what I did. All I did is I changed the pH, okay? It was 8.4. And before when everything was good and I just adjusted the pH, it went from scaling to normal just by adjusting that. But as you could see, I kind of put us in a real Arizona state, let's say for example. So what I'm trying to get at is, is just because you're having uh, just a high temperature, 
just having a high temperature will, will take your water from a normal to scaling just because of the water temperature alone. So there's so many factors that can make your water scaling um, and uh, uh, just basically not normal, not, not the exact level that you guys wanna be at. Uh, so there's very, there's very small adjustments made. Having this information, you can adjust multiple things. Obviously you can't adjust temperature, so you're gonna have to adjust other things. For example, if you have a high temperature, you're gonna have to adjust your pH lower than just going from 8.4 to 8.1. You're gonna need to go lower to get that actual scaling to go to normal. So what I mean by that is before it was 71 degrees at the very top right, now it's 91 degrees. So now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take this pH, as you can see, even farther down. Does that make sense? So before I had an 8.4, everything was lower. The temperature was 71 degrees. The pH was 8.4. I just needed a very small amount of acid to take my water from scaling to normal. Now that the temperature is 91, which we are all in that range right now, I have to adjust my pH farther down to get my water to go from scaling to normal. Does that make sense? So I have to produce more acid into the pool to adjust the temperature. So that's again, another factor. Um, as you guys well known that having a pool in the winter is fantastic. It looks crystal clear, there's very little adjustment. But as soon as the sun pops up, you know, right around the May area, as soon as you start to feel the heat, the adjustments go really out of whack in the pool. You're adjusting more pH, you're putting more acid in the water, you're cleaning the cell a lot more, um, you're adjusting a lot more to keep that water nice and clean for yourselves. So again, the advantage of this system, it doesn't matter what time it is, what day it is, what season it is, it's adjusting it for you. That's that's the beauty of this particular system. So your, your heart went up to like 400 and it was only Yes. Exactly, exactly. That's that's the benefit. But see, without having this, you wouldn't know that. You know what I mean? You're just kind of guessing it. Yeah, you're guessing and you're constantly adjusting. Now, I'm not going to tell you that a calcium harness of 400 is normal. It's, it's in that normal range, but it's at the very high end. I could tell you right now, everybody sitting here, including us three here, our pools are over 400. Guarantee it because within months of having a swimming pool in Arizona and the hard water that comes out of the tap, it's increasing the, the, the calcium hardness level right out of the gate. And as soon as you get over the 400 range, instead of the hardness, the minerals evaporating away, they stay behind. That's why you see that tile line. You know, again, most pool people say, well, if you own a pool, you're gonna have a line around your tile. It's untrue. It's just very, very hard in Arizona to prevent it because of the high temperature and the hard water. But you can combat it with having your pH adjusted properly. See, the thing is, is all of us, unless we're, you know, we have nothing else in the world to do to test, we've got to test our water almost daily to stay on top of it. You know what I mean? That's why they came out with systems like this because it's doing it for you. We all don't have time to test our water once a day or every two days. But in Arizona, to really have the ideal water, you have to do that. Because I can tell you, every time you all test your water, the pH is high for one right out of the gate. So you're constantly putting this acid in. But once it's high, it's already scaling. It puts you in that wrong area where you want to be. You know what I mean? So here's the ideal range. It's here normally, right? And as soon as it happens, it goes above. It's creating a problem. We put the acid in, it goes like this. So this is happening. Here's your perfect level. It's going like this, right? With this system, it goes like this. Does that make sense? I know that's kind of weird. You know, I'm just trying to break it down as far as layman terms. It's It allows the balance to stay more tight rather than being scaling, good. Scaling, good, it's gonna be good consistently. But again, it's something that you need to maintenance because if the probes are off, then it's, you, you're no good because the probes aren't reading correctly. So it is something that you've got to clean the probes, you've got to maintain to make sure that there's acid in the container and it'll do all the service for you from there. So it, it, there's, there's definitely some benefit to you. Um, you can, 
uh, find out what your saturation index is. There's so many online uh, things that you can, uh, like there's an Arenda app. I think I've shown some people the Arenda app. There's different apps. You want to throw that on there, kid? Um, there's different apps to uh, calculations for water chemistry. So you can actually pull an app up, put all the information in, and it'll give you your saturation index. Um, but, you know, there's, there's definitely tools out there for you to know uh, that will put you in the same scenario. But again, you have to manually make the adjustments yourself. With this system, does it all for you. Cool? Any questions? As clear as mud? <laughs> all right. So let's, um, we have any online people at all? Any questions online? So I wanted to bring this in. Um, again, uh, if you know me, um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I can for you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yes. Chlorine? Yeah. Just depends on the pool. You always want to make sure that it's giving you a general of 2.0 of free chlorine as a minimum, 2.0. Yeah. So you want to test the water and then basically make the adjustment on the cell and the cell will, you need to increase the percentage and that will give you more free chlorine. But also it's not just the adjustment of the cell, it's the amount of runtime that you're running the pool. So for example, some people forget that there's an adjustment between winter and summer. You know, so in the winter, um, you'll have six to eight hours on an average pool. You know, in the summer, you need to be eight to 10 hours at least, you know what I mean, depending. So. One hour or 10 degrees is is the basic rule of thumb, but it doesn't, if, if you think about it, that's that doesn't pertain to each size body of water, okay? Because 10 hours to a 12,000 gallon pool may be perfect, but that's not gonna treat a 25,000 gallon pool. Does that make sense? So that rule of thumb is basic, but I would say adjust off of your pool body size and usage. Again, you may have a huge pool that no one swims in, or you may have a small pool that everybody swims in, you know what I mean? So, you know, do you have pets? Do you not have pets? You know, dogs are very oily uh, animals. They soak a lot of free chlorine up. So if you have a dog that's consistently in and out of your pool, you know, then that's something that you'll have to adjust for. If you have a lot of swimmers, that's something you'll have to adjust for, but it all just depends for sure. But um, on for to answer your question is, basically you would wanna test the water, make sure you have a general, you know, if you test, at night after it's ran, you may have a little higher chlorine. And if you test in the morning, you may have a lower chlorine. You know what I mean? Just to, so it all depends on when you test as well. If your system ran all night long, you may have a good free chlorine in the morning, right when it's turned off. But in the afternoon, you may have not very much. You know what I mean? So kind of adjust or you want to kind of test and adjust off of your runtime. So if your pool is ran all night long, as soon as it shuts off, try to test after that. Obviously, if it shuts off at two in the morning. I don't want you out there testing at 2.30. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying in the morning when you wake up, test right then and that'll give you your true reading. Because if it hasn't run all day, the depletion of chlorine is gonna happen because the sun's out, people are swimming. You know what I mean? So if you adjust, you know, if you test for free chlorine at the end of the day, it may show that it's lower than the actual normal range. All right? You want to, you only need to adjust when you need to adjust. You know what I'm saying? So don't, uh, a lot of people get into the, well, I need to put acid in the pool. Well, I need to put, well, you don't need to unless you need to. You know what I'm saying? So always test first and then make the adjustment after. You know, don't get in tune. And here's an example, a perfect example. We're all in the scaling range, right? Right now. So we're used to, oh man, we got to get this acid in to get the pH down. <laughs> Okay, and then December, what changes? The temperature outside, right? Dramatically changes 20, 30 degrees, right? So now, instead of being 110, 115, you're in that 80 degree range, right? So now that's a dramatic change on your pool water. So before you go putting that acid in, that pool may not 
need the acid anymore. You know what I mean? It may just be perfect. So by you putting the acid in has now lowered it out of this range. Now you're here and you were here. You were perfect. Didn't need to do that. The problem with that is that's the benefit of this. This is doing it for you. You know what I'm saying? And it's adjusting and testing for you. Where you, if you just get accustomed to putting something in, then next thing you know, your pH is real low and that's acidic and that's aggressive corrosive water. But again, without this system, you have no clue. You're just winging it, let's say. So there, you know, there is some benefit to this system. Um, there's some benefit to a salt system. Uh, I will tell you, having sodium in your water will, not dramatically, but will show you a higher pH than a, a pool with no sodium, okay? It's a fact. If you have salt water, you'll have a little higher pH level than you will a non-salt pool. But with a non-salt pool, you're putting costly tablets in, you know what I mean? Not a bad idea, works perfect, you know what I mean? But you, then you end up building up other chemicals because of it with a salt system. You don't have that, this does it for you. So there's, there's really some benefit of having stuff like this. Um, it's all about basic maintenance. If you stay on the maintenance and you keep things clean, it'll last a lifetime. If you don't touch it and you think it's a set and forget, it's gonna give you some trouble because probes are gonna wear. You know, it's just like anything else. If you don't maintenance it, you'll have a problem with it. Uh, if the people that have these units that love them, it's because they're out here cleaning these probes, which take next to no time, and they're keeping this container full of acid. I mean, really, that's the only maintenance to the system other than cleaning the salt cell. Now, you can use this system without having a salt system. You can have a basic chlorine floater or a deck chlor or however you want to chlorinate it. And you can have this system just testing and monitoring your pH for you. So there's another factor that you don't necessarily have to have a salt system to have this unit working for you. All right. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming this is only running when the pool is being cleaned. Yes, sir. Yep. And then does that connect also to the screen logic? Absolutely. Yep, fully adjustable. It, you'll just see another line item under where it says IntelliClor. It'll say IntelliChem. You adjust the pH. Now there is, the saturation index is not in there, but you, you have the basic adjustment of your pH level and your ORP. So for example, uh, you test your water and you need more chlorine, you go to your app or you go to the Easy Touch, or you go to the panel itself and you adjust the ORP up or down. Same like a percentage and same with the pH, you know what I mean? Uh, you can adjust the pH up a little bit or down a little bit, however you want. But I would say the default of 7.5 is right exactly where you need to be. I would just leave it as is. It's just, it's just basically the, the, the small amount of maintenance and the, uh, you know, keeping the container. It, it's funny. But you'd be amazed how many times we come across this container being completely empty and they're going, what the heck's going on? My pH isn't working. Well, this has got to be full of acid in order to lower the pH. So again, uh, a lot of people think it's a high maintenance thing. Very, very, it's not. You fill this with muriatic acid and water, you clean two probes, that's all the maintenance you need on this particular system. Yes, ma'am. Um, these probes, I think they're just oh, just under two hundred dollars. I think they're about one hundred and eighty bucks. Um, I would say you should get at least three to five years out of the probes. But again, it's all on maintenance. If you don't touch it, it's going to last you two, three years. If you clean it and maintenance it, um, it could last you five. It could last you ten years. It just depends. Um, I can't. I, I'd love to give you an accurate uh, information, but it's very tough to know. Some. Some will last, I mean, we have systems out there that are eight, 10 years old and they're on the original probes. You know what I mean? Uh, we have some systems that are two, three year old and they've been through a probe or two. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's just one of those things. It's all about maintenance. Uh, it's all about how you want your water. Now, you don't have to have this system. So don't let me try and sell you something. You don't need this system. The only benefit of having this system is when you're at work, it's treating your water. If you don't have this system when you're at work, that water's out of balance. It's just that simple, you know what I mean? Um, I don't have this system, but I, I know water pretty well and I can adjust myself, not because I don't like the system, it's just I don't need it. It doesn't work for me at this particular time. I can adjust and, and make the adjustments myself.
but I test my water quite a bit and I try to keep online. So it's a little different, you know what I mean? <clears throat> this is a great unit for somebody that's out of town a lot. They don't have time or they don't even want, they don't want a pool guy, you know, and they're out of town quite a bit. A lot of uh, Canadian people have these because they're out of town. They can monitor things from their phone, you know what I mean? Kind of see how things are going and it's adjusting the water and that way they don't have to hire a pool guy. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to having the system. There really is. Any questions so far? I got a question just in your on the telecore. Yes. I've taken that out, put the acid and clean the plate. Yes. And when I reinstall it, the outflow, the bottom of that, when I try to seal it up, yeah. I can actually put a pipe wrench on it and, and give it a little torque. Um, the so only I thing. Don't think I should no, no, no. Um, they should almost be a little tighter than hand tight. So anytime you take the union off, there's an O-ring. I recommend just popping the O-ring out, wiping it dry, and just flipping it over. You know what I mean? Just kind of... It has to. It would leak like a sieve without it. It would pour water out without them. They're there. They're, they're just black, and they kind of blend in pretty well. But you could, you should be able to feel it in the seam because without that O-ring, it would just stream water out of the top and bottom for sure. So yeah, just check that. So just make sure when you unthread it, um, get the cell out, pop that O-ring out, wipe it dry. Just flip. I rotate them. You know what I mean? Like if it's this way, I'll just flip it up and put it back down. Make sure it's nice and clean, and then get it back in there. Um, a little bit. I, I see a lot of people using lube on them. It's okay. But you're not trying to fix a leak with it. You're just conditioning the O-ring. So just a very, very small amount. Some people think the more you put on, the more it's going to seal. It actually doesn't allow it to seal. You're better off using a dry O-ring than a two lube O-ring, if that makes sense to you. Um, so yeah, just pop it off, clean it up real good. Little tiny bit of lube just to condition the O-ring. Flip it around, put it back on top and on bottom. The only thing you want to make sure of is there is a flow arrow on the particular cell, make sure it is in the correct orientation. So if it's your first time that you've cleaned the cell, just find out how this arrow, it's either pointing down or pointing up, make sure when you put it back, it is, it is actually in the, the same orientation. You would know if it's wrong, you'll have a flow that should be green, it'll be red saying that there's no flow. All I would do is turn the system off, pull the cell back out, flip it right side up or upside down and put it back in line, turn the pump back on, you should see a good free or a good flow green light. Okay. What yes. Kind of um, the, the, the general rule of thumb is three to one, um, uh, three to one water to acid uh, or one gallon of acid to three gallons of water. Um, I recommend adjusting that to the amount of, of cleanliness you need. So for example, if you have a very little bit of uh, calcium buildup on the salt cell, stick with the three to one. The more aggressive the water is, the more aggressive it is to the salt cell. Um, so I would not recommend going straight acid, but you can make it more um, aggressive. So you don't have to use the three to one, you can use a you know a half-half mix. I normally take like a, 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 like a five gallon bucket, I'll fill it with water and I'll put about a quarter gallon acid in that water. And then I'll pour that in the cell and just kind of see how that works. Is it really cleaning it up really good? If not, I'll make it a little more aggressive. I'll put a little bit more acid in. Um, remember there's, a, well, you can't remember because you probably don't know, but on the actual plates, there's a, an actual coating. Um, and basically you don't want to break down that coating because then you'll have a raw metal plate. And when you have a raw metal plate, it's easier for the calcium to build up on, okay? With the cables, when I was cleaning them, whatever one, I was destroying them. Okay, so that's probably, those are a plastic cell plate, and these are a metal cell plate. A little different, but yeah, just be careful. The other thing is, the cables, I had nice little gasket, put it in the sky, straight up to the gap for this one. It's, it's their only, de it's their design. Yeah, the, the Hayward one has this kind of like little plate. Yeah, or lean it, lean it in the corner somewhere. Yeah, little, you could use a few things. The cap is just a thread cap, and I agree. It's not very, 
you know, you can't freestand it. I mean, it's not the best scenario, but it does. The benefit of having the cap, though, is you're putting the acid water inside the cell. You're not actually taking the cell and dipping the whole thing in the acid water. You're okay to do that. This is completely waterproof, so you can do that. Some people just get the bucket of acid and water. They'll take the cell and drop it right in the water. Does that make sense? The only thing you want to make sure of is that you don't want to get this end. Um, a lot of times, if you take it away from the equipment, for me, I would just say leave this plugged into the actual panel and then just clean it around the equipment. If you want to take it to the front yard, all I do sometimes is I'll just stick this in my pocket, you know what I mean, just so I know it won't get wet, and then I'll just clean it while I'm there, you know what I mean? Something like that, or a bag over it, whatever you want. Just make sure you don't get this end wet um, because... Yeah, I would say don't stick anything in it, um, but if you have, I've done it before, and what I mean, and a, a skewer or a popsicle stick, sometimes you may need to dig something out, but don't use anything metal or a fork or a knife or anything weird like that. Just, you know, if you have to dig something out, I would say a skewer or a, a, a popsicle stick or something wooden that won't scrape or scratch anything. But primarily, if you're on it and you're doing the maintenance that we all should be doing, um, I'd check it and clean it monthly. Now, don't clean it every month unless it needs to be cleaned. I mean, you only want to clean something if it needs, you know what I mean? So again, here's the benefit of this system, right? If your pH is in balance and your water is in balance, the less you're going to have to clean this cell because the calcium is not building up on it because the pH is in balance. Okay. If you're cleaning the cell all the time consistently, it's because your pH is out of whack and your calcium hardness is out of whack. Okay, So that's the beautiful thing. Again, this is the scenario why they make this system um, because, one, uh, it's going to be introducing. And the cool thing about this unit is right where the actual cell sits, we introduce the acid just above it. So the acid water is now going through the cell, breaking the calcium down on the cell. Um, and if you don't know, uh, this is a reverse polarity. So it uses a positive and a negative um, polarity through the salt cell. That's why they say it's a self-cleaning salt cell. And what happens is, is as the calcium builds up on the plates, it's using the positive side, then it's using the negative side, and it basically breaks the calcium off the cell. And some of you may have seen, it looks like little snowflakes in the pool, a little white buildup in the pool. I don't know if you've ever walked into that or seen that. It's not snow, it's, uh, it's calcium. So um, we get a lot of calls. I got snow in my pool. I go, well, you're in Arizona. It ain't snowing for sure. Um, it's calcium. So, um, but what, I get, what I'm trying to get at here is the more your water's balanced, the more your pH is balanced. As you can see, having a correct pH level allows your free chlorine to do its job efficiently. It helps keep the clean, uh, the cell clean because the pH is in, you know, it's a, it's, it's in a balanced level, balanced state. So it's helping break down that calcium. So as the calcium is coming in, trying to build up on the cell, the pH is in check, breaking that calcium down. So it's this give and take scenario, you know, with all of us that don't have the system, we don't know right? We really don't know. We're going in and we're seeing that our pH is high. We're adjusting it. But each time you see the pH that's high, you can bet that you've got calcium building up on the actual salt cell. Oh, continuing with this uh, cup pour, I've got a small pool, 5,000 gallons. Yeah. But yet it runs eight hours a day to pump. Yes. So am I looking at running that pump to cycle the water through or to support the amount of current that's put in to get calcium. Both. So you want to. Like a lot of time for a yeah, pool. yeah. And in Arizona, what we tend to do is you you want to circulate all your water through your filter within a 12 hour. That's kind of the rule of thumb. You want to take every drop of water from your pool, filter it through the filter and back within a 12 hour cycle, right? So what we like to do is we'll probably double it up because Arizona it's very high heat a lot of swimmers, you know what I mean? So we want to make sure that you're you're generally cleaning the pool in a very small amount of time within three to four hours. And then the rest is just circulating water. So um, the answer is, is you can run longer and have less percentage, so longer lifespan on the cell, or you can shrink your time and increase your percentage on the cell. 
So for me to you, run longer, less percentage. It's going to save your life of the actual salt cell. Does that make sense to everybody? You know, so eight hours on a 5,000 gallon pool, maybe a smidge long, but for me to you, what you're spending on that extra hour or two, leave it because your pool looks good, it's clear, it's maintenance well, um, it's, you know, you've got everything working for you, where if you start to shrink your time, you'll simply notice that, hey, it doesn't look as crystal clear as it used to be. It looks a little cloudy, but make the adjustment. Go home and take an hour off your time. You know what I mean? Run it for a few days and see if you see any difference. You'll know right away because uh, either the pool won't look as clean or as, as, as clear as it used to be, or you start to see that the chlorine depletion goes down. So then you have to make the adjustment, right? Then you gotta go to your cell and increase the percentage because now you're not running it as long. Does that make sense to you? So for me, to you, I would say run it longer, and use a le lower percentage on the cell. Yes. Okay. Right. So the low speed is the only time that this system actually gets turned on. So what I recommend is instead of having a low speed and a high speed separate times of the day, make one big time. So what I do is. I would set like, just for an example, do a, a on your low speed, set it from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. Again, this is an example, 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. So that's low speed for eight hours. Then what you do is you take your high speed, you, you really only need your high speed to run maybe three to four hours max, right? Because remember, cleaning is just to clean the pool. No dirt and debris, everything looks pretty good on top. The rest is just slow moving, circulating water, right? So you really only wanna run your high speed long enough to clean your pool. Then you want it nice and low and circulate it. See, Pentair, they recommend running it 24 hours at a very, very low state, right? Because it's the most efficient. You run longer, very low. The lower you can run, the less wattage, the less usage power you use. The problem with that is you have to run at high speed at some time or another in order to clean properly. Okay, so what I'm trying to get at is, is set your low speed, set one big window, 12 a.m. to 8 a.m., okay? Then take your high speed and set it inside that, that, that high speed. So set your high speed at 4 a.m. to 8 a.m., okay? So the reason I say that is, is the high speed takes priority. So at low speed, at midnight, it kicks on very slow. Chlorinator's on, it's producing chlorine for you. And then when the high speed kicks on, the low speed doesn't turn off. It just changes from low to high. But this low speed is still powering the system. So now the system is still on, but it's just in high speed mode. Does that make sense to everybody? Did I lose anybody there? So nothing wrong with splitting your time. The only thing you gotta make sure of when you do that is you have a long enough low speed time to, to circulate the water and chlorinate the water. So for me to you, most of savings, I would say set one big window in your low speed, put your high speed inside your low speed time. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm not trying to lose anybody. So set it from 12 to eight on your low speed. Doesn't mean that your low speed is gonna run to eight. It's only gonna run until the high speed turns on at 4 a.m. Does that make sense? And then nothing's gonna turn off. It's just gonna go and clean the pool to 8 a.m. and then off again. And then midnight the next day, low speed, everything's on, high speed stays on all the way till the high speed's off and then back to normal. If you split it, low speed kicks on. As soon as the low speed's done, everything's off, right? All the equipment's off. And then your high speed comes on just by itself, just the pump only, not the equipment. You want the equipment to run in both low and high. I'm just giving you the 12 to eight just to kind of I got this black tube, right? With yes, light. yes. I thought somebody told me that that was the only thing that, so the fault doesn't come on on high speed? No. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't so know. that's why you want to have that actual window like that. You want to put the high speed and the low speed, and I'm sure we've done that for you. But let's say the equipment's off. You go over right now and turn your high speed on. This system doesn't come on. The salt system doesn't come on. The pump just turns on high speed, okay? If you turn it off, that's it. You turn your low speed on, 
the system comes on, but it's very low moving water, right? So that's why I say, make that big window, put your high speed inside of that window, so that way it chlorinates the entire time and it turns on low and high all in that same window. Does that make sense? Cool. Does it matter if you high speed in the beginning or the end? No. Well, no, 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 it does, I'm sorry. You wanna turn the low speed on first, right? Because that's gonna turn this chlorinator on, okay? So now it's on. Because if you run high speed, basically it's it's not gonna chlorinate through the high speed. You want a low speed first to turn on. Mm -hmm. So, no, so what you want to do is just, I always say 12 to 8 just because it's easy, right? So just set it low speed from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m., right? Now you've got an eight-hour window of low speed. Doesn't mean that the pump's running low speed for eight hours. You've just set this window, right? Now you take your high-speed schedule and you set your high speed for 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. Yeah, you just want to make sure it starts with the low speed first and then let the high speed come in afterwards. See, if you hit the high speed first, then basically the high speed's coming on without the cell. As long as you do, yeah, if you have it, you don't need to do that though. You, if you have them both set at 12 and you just have your high speed, the high speed's going to override. It doesn't matter because the high speed, any higher RPM overrides the lower RPM. So as long as you have it at the same time, it's totally okay. But you just don't need to do that. You know what I mean? You could use low and then high, but as long as you have, so you're saying you have 12 to eight high and 12 to eight low, is that what? 12 to four? Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you could totally do that. As long as you have it set up to where as soon as it turns on, the low speed gets engaged at the same time as the high speed, it's totally fine to do that. Under the cap? This? Yes, you don't need to scrub that or anything. That's just a flow sensor. This here, no, no adjustments to that. No, um, you're, you're going to clean it when you clean the cell. So basically anything that builds up on this panel will get cleaned with the muriatic acid. So what this little paddle is that he's talking about is just a flow sensor. So as the water comes in, it compresses this little paddle together and tells the salt cell that it's got the sufficient amount of flow. Now, if you see, for example, if you see, hey, um, there's something, like I've seen stuff get pinched in between here, believe it or not, little branches and stuff that actually go through the filter. So if you get a no flow, it'd be probably good to check that and see if there's anything in between this paddle, but very rarely there's not. But I have seen stuff get between the paddle that the paddle's not reading, it's not telling the salt cell that it's got the sufficient amount of flow. All right, any questions so far? Again, I'm sorry that you don't, you know, Talking about a system you don't have is very tough for me to do, but I at least wanted to give you the benefits of it. It's a great system. Um, it's something that will definitely help balance your water. It gives you a, 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 a kind of peace of mind that, hey, your water is getting balanced properly and it's getting balanced and tested every day rather than every couple days that you're testing manually. So overall, it's a phenomenal system. So I do wanna, Ken, you may have to help me with this fin. So. This is a cool little unit. Um, again, we're not big into selling you stuff that either tested or done ourselves. This is a super cool unit. Uh, this is called the fin. Ken Chandler over here has one. Uh, and what this is, is this is a monitoring system of your pH and your uh, ORP um, and water temperature. So the benefit of having this is, this is, uh, I would, let's just start with this. So basically you've got the fin piece, okay? And what this does is that floats in your pool, all around your pool, looks like a little shark fin. And basically it's gonna give you, you, you uh, download an app for it. And then basically this registers the information to the app and lets you know if the pH is uh, correct, if the ORP is, is set correctly, um, or allowing you to know the adjustment if it's needed. 
um, and it'll also tell you the temperature, okay? And it has a test strip that comes with it that basically you can manually test uh, the, the water to, to know uh, if your alkalinity and uh, your calcium hardness and so forth is in check as well. So the cool thing about this unit is it's a monitoring system, so it'll tell you rather than you walking to the pool itself, you can pull your phone uh, out of your pocket, go to your app, and find out if your water is in balance or not, and it'll tell you generally exactly what to add and how much to add. Now, there is some graphs and there's some calculators on over the internet that can help you tell you exactly what you need to add. But for example, can you hit, so is this your pool here? Yeah, so when you open it up, <coughs> Blue means it's good, it's good to balance. Here's the temperature. So if you hit that, then it'll bring out, now say the pH might need to adjust soon. Now I've got a salt cell, so my chlorine never needs to be adjusted because that salt cell takes care of it. So the only thing is the pH. And you know, I've been in the pool business 25 years. I know my pH needs to be adjusted, but six weeks ago I had a calcium line because I didn't take care of my pH. So I got this unit specifically to be that knock on my head, reminding me that I need to keep my pH adjusted, and that's what it does. Is it keeps me keeps reminding me whenever I need to add acid, so I don't have to remember to go out and you know I'm going to make sure remember. It's just you get busy in life and you forget about it. If you forget about it for two weeks, you could have a calcium line, right? You do it when it needs to be done. You'll never see a calcium. I haven't had a calcium line on my pool since I installed it, so that's kind of the key. Um, so does that does it tell you how much acid to add? Um, so you have they have different chemicals that you can use from some of the vendors that they're affiliated with. Like if you go to Leslie, you can buy a system, and it'll tell you you need to add four ounces of pH down, for example. And this one will just tell you. So if I hit that adjustment, it tells me I need to adjust my pH by. Oh, there it is. So I need to lower my pH by 0.5. So I would go to my acid that I use, and it will tell me how much I need to add to just by 0.5 for a 12,000 gallon pool. So, yeah, there's some cool calculators. So you could say, hey, for a 12,000 gallon pool, uh, my pH is 7.5. I want it to go to 7.0. It'll say, hey, you need to add two cups of muriatic acid. So that's the cool thing about it. This is, you know, that that helping. Uh, hand that's in the water telling you to your phone what it is rather than you individually testing it. And then once a month you do a test strip and then you put it, there's a card, you put it on the card and you actually take a picture of it with the app. That sends that information back to their computers and they adjust your sensors to, to, to match that. So we talked about these other sensors, these other probes you have to clean. You never clean these because that monthly water test adjust the system for whatever condition those probes are in. Okay. Calibrate so it for you. Go to the water report. Now this is going to tell me, see my total alkalinity was high, which that came down when I adjusted my pH. Total hardness is high, which we all know, right? So I need to start draining some water, refilling it to get that total hardness down, because that total hardness combined with a high pH is what's going to result in that calcium line on the pool. So your options there are either keep keep the pH lower, so it offsets that calcium hardness, or drain that water down and get some fresh water and get the total hardness down so you don't have to keep the pH super low to keep that saturation index at, at the zero range. So when you scan the test strip, like I said, it's a simple test strip, you, and then pop the app talks you right through it. Dip the test strip, put it on, take a picture of it, you're done. You do that once a month, it calibrates it, it keeps everything in check here and checks your other chemistry that you have to check normally with a test strip. I mean the biggest thing you know um, anybody have the floater here's the thing about floaters we all look at that and we go there's some tablets in there there's some chlorine in your tablets you ever opened it and there's nothing but a leaf at the bottom you know what I'm saying that's that's this that's the beautiful thing about this stuff you know is this kind of tells you exactly what you're needing to look for rather than having to be there and test so that's the cool thing about stuff like this i can test this is my water for the last seven days i can tell you before i had this this line would have been like this would have been way high way low way high way low right because i wouldn't be watching it regularly what this application has done is allowed me to keep everything a lot more <coughs> 
And a big thing too is, you know, with the pH, like I said, having the pH balanced right, you will see a dramatic change in the essence of your pool. It'll be a lot crystal, more, you know, a lot more crystal clear, um, a lot better feeling to our skin and our eyes. I mean, our eyes are generally acidic. So when we have our, our eye, the duct, tear ducts in our eyes are generally 6.8 to 7.0, almost acidic. So when you have that high pH range, like we all do, you get this red eye scenario in your pool. Most people um, correlate that to a chlorine problem. And it's not, it's pH. It's pH that's affecting your eyes, you know what I mean? Because it's a scaling. So to, to the most important factor, back in the day, we, you know, we all thought the most important thing to pool is chlorine, right? Because it makes our pool look good, right? But really, when we've, when we've done this, pH and alkalinity is by far the most two important chemicals to keep on track because it helps keep our pool looking good it allows the free chlorine to do its job properly rather than guarding it, let's say. And it just basically, the water feels better and the pool looks clearer. I mean, so overall, having pH dialed in, just like Ken said, instead of having this up and down scenario, like all of us are normally having, it keeps this true line across, keeping that pH balanced for you. So there's definitely some advantages to the system. Um, and definitely some advantages to having the IntelliChem for sure. This is today 249. They're normally 349 ish, um, but we're knocking 100 bucks off today. We've got two of them available. Again, cool things. Um, you know, there's nothing pressure here to buy anything. We just like to show you something. Again, Ken's got one. I'm going to have one. Um, it's just something cool that we like to bring to you, bring to the table that we've. Again, we, we're not into selling nothing, but we, we, if we see something that's beneficial to you, we want to show you because uh, normally anytime we bring something to the table like this, one of us have got it in our pool. And we'll, we'll run with it for a few months to see how things work, you know, because we don't want to just say, hey, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Take one home and then you hate it. You know what I mean? So we want to make sure it's something that's going to be beneficial for your pool and it's going to help you maintain that kind of true line of water chemistry. Sorry, sir. No, no, this is just monitoring. The, the, the benefit thing of this is it tells you on your phone in the comfort of your home or anywhere else where your water is. You know what I mean? So without this, let's say you've got to go to the pool and test it. With this, you pull your phone out of your pocket and it'll tell you. I mean, that's just the benefit. You know what I mean? Because we all look out. I know we're all guilty of it. We look through the blinds and we go, man, that pool looks great, don't it? And it's not, it's in bad shape. So let me tell you, having these systems really tells you where you are and it really dials you in. Um, and if you're interested in keeping a proper water balance, this is the stuff you gotta do. Or you just gotta be the proactive person that's on your pool you know, every couple days testing. Because believe it or not, if you let a week go by, things are trouble pH is high, the calcium's high, you get build up on the cell, you get build up on the tile, and we're all in the same boat. You know, don't we're no different. I'm I'm a pool owner, Ken's a pool owner. We have the same tile scale, we have the same scenarios that you do. Um, we're just trying to defend it the best we can and stuff like this product and the IntelliCam and just teaching you how to adjust your chemistry more frequently and and, and how to adjust it is simply just going to benefit the, the way your pool looks and reacts for sure. All right. Scale? Um, you know, the, the only recommendation I could say to, to combat scale, if you've got it on your tile, there's really only one way to get it off, and that's to actually have it professionally cleaned. Now, if it's just a very small, faint line, People use pumice stones. Um, you, people use a little muriatic acid with a scrubber. I mean, there's all kinds of little things you can do. I highly recommend you try it. You're in the pool already kind of floating around, nothing better than to kind of help scrub your tile. So if you see that, like the big thing for me to you is anytime you brush your pool, you should always brush the tile line. That's the most important, not necessarily the most important, but that's where everything builds up, you know what I mean? Um, but the key is, is keep your pH in check and, and monitor your calcium hardness because we all have high cal calcium, we all have hard water. And I was just telling this gentleman in the back, 
you know, back in the day, it used to be drain your pool every two to three, every four years. Now, it's every year and a half, two years, because the calcium is already high. I mean, some of you, unfortunately, you filled your pool and your calcium's almost too high already. You're, you just filled it, you know what I mean? It's because in this state, it's very, very hard water. Buckeye, really, really bad. Um, and then we're seeing a really bad area. What's that, uh, Andrew, what's that black? Can't remember what it's called. It's a big development uh, up by Vassant, what, where is it? Blackstone, um, very, very, it, it's well water. And so that water is super, super concentrated for calcium. Uh, we're just having some struggle. So again, um, you're in a tough zone with Arizona, uh, high heat, high pH problem. The best way to fight that is keep your pH in check and drain your water regularly, and life will be a lot better for you. All right? I'd love for you guys to hang out with me more, but I got some things to do today as well as you. So. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you for being here.